Hi everyone and welcome to our summary video about population growth in closed cultures. So we're continuing on with our module 6 work and we're going to be having a look at the spec reference 6.2.1H and that's part 1 and part 2. So having a look at the standard growth curve for microorganisms in a closed culture and then also practical investigations into those factors affecting their growth. And this is where we're going to start to bring in some of those practical skills as well. So the first thing we're going to have a look at then is how we can work out population sizes. Now, if we start off with a liquid broth, then the first thing we need to do is obviously have a sterile broth as we've established in our previous sessions. And we then need to inoculate that with our particular microorganism that we wish to study. Then what we're going to do is at regular intervals throughout this incubation process, then we are going to basically take the broth Give it a good shake and the purpose behind giving the broth a shake at this stage is to evenly distribute that bacteria now obviously if we just left it then they would have a risk of settling to the bottom so if you took a sample you wouldn't have a proportional amount of bacteria in all sections so giving it that shake evenly distributes them throughout the actual sample so that when we actually take our little small sample out it's going to be representative we then transfer this small sample onto an agar plate, we incubate the plate, and then we take it out and count how many colonies are visible. One of the problems that we will find with that process is if we are just to take these samples from a typical bacterial culture, there is a high probability that we are going to find it incredibly difficult to actually count the number of colonies that grow on the agar plate because we're going to have very high population densities. So how can we solve this? What we do is a technique called a serial dilution. Now the purpose of doing serial dilution is to obviously make the number of colonies that will appear on that final agar plate possible for counting because we're reducing the population density on that plate. How do we do this? Well, what we're going to do is basically take a proportion of broth and a proportion of distilled water and mix the two together. Now, depending on the dilution that you're aiming for, the values could be different. Typical one that we would do, and probably what you did in class with your assessed practical task, is that you did one centimeter cubed of your broth. So that's the one that contains your microbial culture. And then you added that to nine centimeters cubed of distilled water because that's a 10 to the minus one dilution. You can obviously then repeat that by taking one centimeter cubed of that 10 to the minus one dilution, add that to the nine centimeters cubed of distilled water in another tube, and then we're going to keep diluting it down and therefore reducing that population density. Because what we're doing at each step of that serial dilution is diluting that broth by a factor of 10. If we then get a question, and these come up every once in a while as one of those maths based questions about how we would calculate the population in the original culture, then however many colonies you counted on that plate that you did, you are then going to have to multiply that by obviously the volume added to the plate and by the dilution factor. So if we were doing it as a dilution factor of 10, for example, then we did five of those, it would be 10 to the power five we would multiply by. Because there were five dilution factors, they were to a factor of 10 as a dilution. So we would have counted maybe, I don't know, 20 colonies times 10 to the power five times whatever volume we need in our original flask. And that gives us our original culture. The other part of the spec we're looking at today is all about these growth curves in closed cultures. What we're talking about with a closed culture is one of these that has no exchange of nutrients or gases with the external environment. So to all intents and purposes, we put a stopper in it. OK, so we're not adding things. We're not taking things out. We have literally put everything into this flask, chucked a stopper in the top, and then we see what happens. That's what we mean by closed culture in very simplistic terms. The proper definition, no exchange of nutrients or gases with the external environment. Now, once we put microorganisms in this closed culture, 
they follow a really predictable pattern in behavior. So what we can do is actually talk about what's happening to the population by following this predictable pattern. And what we can see on the right is the predictable pattern. So we're going to go through each of these little phases one bit at a time to explain what's happening at each point. So our first phase is all the way over here on the left hand side, the lag phase. So this is where we're starting off. Obviously, our time is zero on that left hand side there. Now, initially, what we find is that we're going to have very slow initial growth. This comes down to the fact that we've literally just introduced these microorganisms to this environment. It takes them time to acclimatize. So what we find is during that initial acclimatizing phase, then we're going to see them growing. They're potentially switching on different genes. They're synthesizing proteins. They need to carry out different processes. All of that means they're not seeing a rapid increase in their population very slow, and that is the lag phase. The second stage is this clear diagonal line going up on the graph, the log phase, sometimes referred to as the exponential phase. Now, this is characterized by the rapid growth, as we can see by the gradient on the line on the graph there. And what we actually find is that the population within our culture is going to double in size with each generation. So bearing in mind that bacteria can replicate every 20 minutes, that means that we're going to be doubling the number of bacteria within that culture every 20 minutes. Numbers build up pretty quick, hence the steep gradient on that line. What we can see as the third phase on the graph then is the stationary phase. Now the stationary phase is characterized by that horizontal line. So the number of cells is not increasing, nor is it decreasing at this point. Reason for that, the reproduction rate is equal to the death rate. This is one of those phrases we're going to be picky. We must use the phrase reproduction. Do not say birth rate, because if we are talking about bacteria, they are not giving birth. Birth requires a birth canal. Bacteria have no birth canal. They are single celled. They have no reproductive structures in that way. Therefore, if you're writing down birth rate, we're not giving you the marks, folks. You've got to say reproduction rate equals death rate. The reason that we see that death rate increasing to equal the reproduction rate is because we are having the situation where the nutrients are now being used up. Remember what we said, this is a closed culture. We're not adding anything extra. So as this number of bacteria has increased through that log phase, what we have now done is started to deplete those resources. So we're now in this stationary phase there's a fair number of them dying off because they're starting to run out of these nutrients. And we're also seeing the accumulation of these waste products because as they're carrying out all their happy little life processes, they're producing a bunch of waste products which are then going to be accumulating within the area, some of which may well be toxic. The fourth and final phase we have then is the death or decline phase quite self-explanatory. Basically, in your death phase, the death rate is greater than the reproduction rate. Therefore, we're getting that negative gradient on the line because the population is decreasing because the death rate is greater. The reason for that, those nutrients, they run out. Because the nutrients have run out, then obviously there's nothing to support that population. So they're going to have a much more rapid rate of death. We also find those waste products have now accumulated to these lethal levels. They're going to be killing off some of these microorganisms that are present. All of that just contributes to the death. When we are looking at these growth curves in the question, please read it, because what we can see is we've got quite a large axis for time. Now, time could very well be starting at obviously zero, and we could be going up to any number of hours. If the question is asking you about hours 30 to 48, please don't talk about hours 0 to 30. All you're doing at that point is wasting paper and wasting the time in the exam. So read the question. If it tells you to focus on a particular time period, focus on that time period. You're not going to get marks for waffling about the other stuff. All you're going to do there is just use up valuable time 
that you could be using on a different question. So read the question, stick to the section it's asking you to stick to. Now, if we consider these metabolites then, if the primary metabolites are the desired product, then we are not going to be using a closed culture to generate that product because the primary metabolites are being created in the log phase. That's that exponential phase of growth. The only way we can keep those organisms within the exponential phase, the log phase, is ensuring those optimal conditions are maintained, i.e. we have kept adding nutrients so they're not going to be put under that stress. If the system is a closed system, that's not going to be the case. They're going to eventually start to run out of nutrients. They're then going to leave the log phase and enter the stationary phase. At that point, they won't be making those primary metabolites. So if it's a primary metabolite, then it's not going to be a closed culture. If, however, we are trying to make a product that is a secondary metabolite, these are the ones that are produced in the stationary phase. Therefore, this will be a closed culture that we are using. Now, what we actually do with this one is we will then collect these secondary metabolites at the end of the stationary phase. So we run our little culture, we've obviously got a fixed amount of nutrients, etc., in there, and then when we know that they're entering the end of that stationary phase, we just collect all those secondary metabolite products. As always, I recommend that you subscribe to the channel so you can see when another video is uploaded, and don't forget to head on over to the A-Level Biology website where you can find a selection of other resources that will help you in studying for your A-Level Biology exams.